Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll solve some problems that you will find on page number 1008. Please turn to it, page 1008. Always make sure the book is in front of you. We'll pick up from number 23. Let's take a look at it. Number 23, we have five properties we're given. Property C, D, E, there is no F, C, D, E, G, and H. These are the prices of the properties that were paid when we bought the property, and this is what we're charging for rent. And our job is simply is to recognize the right equation among the four answer choices. We are told that the relationship is linear. The relationship is linear and the amount of rent that we charge for a given property depends on what we paid for it. One more time, the amount of rent that we pay depends on the price. So price is the independent variable. So if you were to plot it, price is the independent variable. Here is the rent and it looks something like this. And if you can recognize the slope, and of course, in the real exam, you wouldn't be sitting there wasting your time doing all this out. I'm just doing it, obviously, to make you understand. Um, we are told the relationship is linear. So if we can recognize the slope, we can figure out which of the four, four equations is the right answer. That's all we have to do here. So this is what I did. I started out with something very simple. I just took the first two. First two, as you can see, the change in price is 180. So here, we're trying to figure out the slope. And slope, as we know, is simply ch uh, a change in, change in y over change in rise over run. Rise over run, I'm not going to write it here. Rise over run. In this case, the y is the rent here, so change in rent over the change in price. And let's see what we can do here. So the change in price here is one, 180 to 130, that's 50. That's our... That's our that goes at the bottom here, 50, and the change in rent, and again this is where I have I have some. Oh, I did not use the first two. I do I use something else, but that's okay. That's all right. Since I started it, let's finish it up. Let's, since, since since I started, I use I use 70 and 40 in my notes. I just realized, which is why I'm. Uh, we'll do that again if you like. The change in change in rent. Again, you don't have to be stickler wasting your time here. We don't, precision is not required. Our job is not to figure out what the right answer is. Our job simply is to be able to recognize what the right answer is. There is a big difference. Precision is not required. So, 1300 and 950, that's the difference of 1300 to 1000 would have been 300, so it's 350. There we go. That's all we need here. Okay, watch what happens. Even though I'm using the different points, I use, I use these two in my notes. I'll do that in a second also if you like. So here we go. Zero goes out and 5 divided by 35. Oh, there you go. 7, 5 to 35. There you go. It comes out to be slope of 7. Once you recognize the slope is 7, we already know the answer is either C or D. Answer is either C or D. Let's do the two points that I used, which was from 70 to 140. In that case, using, using these two points, E and F, the change, change in price, the change in price would be 70, the change in rent goes from 1040 to 515, 500, 515, I just use 500, just to keep our math simple. As I said, you don't have to be a stickler, 7 goes, 0 goes away, and 7 divided by 50, 49 would have been 7, so it's 7 and 1 seventh. It tells me the slope, whatever it is, is more than 7. Slope is more than 7. There is only one answer choice with the slope of more than 7, the answer is D. The answer is D. And at this point, in the real exam, I'm going to do it here three times because we're just learning here, we're not here taking the exam. In the real exam, you only have to do once, just take one observation and confirm it. Make sure it makes sense. Just take one observation, any one you like. Let's take the first one, for example, 130. So if the slope is in fact 7 and a, uh, slope, answer choice we are saying is the answer, answer is D. In answer choice D, in answer choice D, we are given that the rent is a function of price, which is seven and a half P minus 10. Forget about minus 10 right now. 
this work is seven and a half and we're going to take this 130 to see what happens 130 seven and a half times 130s let's see what it works out of you okay stay with me in the story seven times 100 is 700 seven times 30 is 210 and half of half of 130 half of 130 is going to be 65 and we add them up we get five seven 975 as you can see there 975 minus 10 minus 10 is going to give you 965 we are told that is 950 that's close enough that's what it is the answer is indeed answer is indeed D I'm going to do one more just to convince you let's do it here we don't need the graph anymore let's do it here let's take one more observation if you like we'll do one from my notes here uh, we did 130 let's, let's, do, let's, do, let's do the last one 450 let's see if it works out if we the idea here is very simple. If the landlord had to pay a lot for the property, he's going to charge you a lot for the rent. The more expensive the property is, the more you're going to pay for the rent. The answer is, the idea is very straightforward. So if we paid $450,000 for the, for, the, for the property, we would like to charge $3,365. Let's, let's see what D gives us. This is what we're working with. So again, 7.5 times, times the price, which is four fifty. Seven and a half times 450 before we did 130 let's see what works out works out very quickly again 7 times 400 is going to be 2800 2, 7 times 400 understand this is this 4 is 400 7 fives 7 fives are 35 7 this is not a 5 this is 50 7 fives are 35 so it's 350 and half of 450 half of 450 is 225 5 7 that's a 10, 3, 13, 3, 3, 7, 5, minus 10, minus 10, Must, mustn't forget this minus 10 here, minus 10, what do you suppose it gives us, it gives us 3, 3, 6, 5, it checks out, that's exactly what we're charging, the answer is indeed D, let's do the next one, shall we, let's do the next one, I have to raise a lot of stuff, let's do the next one, the answer is D, number 24, the reason we cannot erase the thing because number 24 also deals with the same table. So here is what we are told in number 24. We are told that for the property G, we are dealing with this property here, property G, it says that we got, when we bought it, when, this, when we bought this property, we got 40% off plus an additional, additional 20% off for cash payment. I know you guys are too young, you don't know much about these things, but that's what happens when you buy a property. You Typically people take a mortgage, a bank loan, which takes some time. But if you tell them that I have cash for the property, you don't have to wait, I can pay you right now, they usually give you some more discount. In this case, the some more discount was additional 20%. What is the question asking? So of course, our job is to, let's see what they, what they are asking here. What was the original price? That's all they are looking for. What was the original price? So let's start. Let's, start. let's deal with percentages. So if it was 100%, you can think of this as the dollar amount or the percentage, doesn't matter. It is a dollar amount, but it is a percentage also. We get 40% off. That's 60. Then we get additional 20% off. 10% of 60 is 6. 20% of 60 would be 12. So that's 48 and that's 48 is a 48 percent and the question simply is 48 percent of what is what did we pay for it G oh we paid 140 we paid 140 the question is what was the original price what must have been the original price if if this is the case what was what was the property what was the original price of the property if we happen to get it at 40% discount plus another 20% discount for cash payment that's what we're looking for let's do it there there is this part so 48% 48% percent means over 100 off means times what is the unknown is is the equal sign 
and this is this. This is the equation we're dealing with. This is what we're dealing with, see what we can get here. If we solve for x, if we solve for x, 100 is going to go up there, 140 times 100 over 48, over 48. Now, uh, we can make a fuss about it. Should I do it the way I would do it myself? It's instead of making a fuss about it. This is what I would do it. I'll just pretend it's 50. Just to get a general idea, just to get, that's what you have to do in the exam. The answers are so far apart. If you look at the answer choices, they are so far apart. We are 175, 233, 291, 350. They're far enough apart. Now, when you do these kind of things, we are estimating it. Estimating is fine and dandy. As a matter of fact, I encourage you to always estimate to save time. Estimating, as I always say, is fine and dandy as long as you're cognizant of whether you are underestimating or overestimating. Ask yourself, what are we doing just now? It was 48. It is supposed to be 48. Right here, it's supposed to be 48. But I was down 50. By putting a, by putting a bigger number at the bottom, this whole thing is going to be smaller than what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be, it's going to be smaller than what it's supposed to be. We are underestimating it. So whatever answer we come up with here, the correct answer is going to be slightly more than that. That's all you have to understand. And now we are done. That's it. 15 to 100 is 2, is 280. The correct answer is not actually 280. Whatever the correct answer is, is something slightly more than 280. Slightly more than 280, slightly more than 280 rules out 350. The answer is 291. The original price must have been 291. And if you like, I'm going to show you here. Again, this is not for the exam. This is just to conf just to convince you. I'm going to show you here that it does work out. So again, instead of using 291, I'm going to pretend it's 300. If it is 300, 10 percent of 300 is 30. 20 percent would be 60. 40 percent would be 120. So that's the 40 percent off that we got. So that gives us 280. Then we are told that we got additional 20 percent off. Additional 20%. 10% of 280 is 28. Additional 20% will be 36. 28? That's wrong. That should be 180. That should be 180. Obviously, if you're going to subtract 300 minus 100 itself is 200, so it's not going to be 280. It's 180. 10% is 18. 20% is 36. We get a 4. Uh, 7 minus. 7 minus 3 is 4, 144, and there we go, 140. It's 140, we're getting 144 because we're using 300 instead of 291. Let's do the next one. Now the question is, when do you develop that kind of confidence before you can go around estimating like this? The answer is, by by sheer practice. The more co more problems you practice, the more, more comfortable you're going to get. Number 25. In number 25, we have 300 people, we are told. I'm not going to write the entire question on the blackboard. Here's what's going on. We have 300 people in an experiment, and they are shown five pictures. And they are asked to pick one picture that they find the most appealing. That's all it is. They are asked to find, pick one picture out of the five that you find most appealing. So it turns out that out of the first 150, out of the first 150, 36 picked the first one. 36 picks the first one. Now, had it been simple random choice, out of five pictures, we would expect about one-fifth of the people would pick the first one, one-fifth would pick the people, the second one, and so on and so forth. One-fifth of 150, 20% of 150 is 30. We would expect about 30 people to pick the first any given picture. Instead, the very first picture they were shown, 36 people picked that one. Apparently, there's some bias going on here. The remaining 150, the next 150, P number of people picked the first one. Now pay attention because when I was doing the problem myself the first time I wasn't paying attention and I thought it was because I saw P I just assumed it was a percentage. It's not the P percentage, it's the actual absolute number, P number of people. We are further told that overall, we are further told that overall 
more than 20% hit the first one. More than 20% pick first one. The question simply is, what are the possible values? What are the possible values? Of P. Let's find out, shall we? So we have 36 people. We have 36 people from here. We have P people, P number of people from here, right here. P number of people. That's, that's how many people picked the first picture. And we are told that this amount is more than 20%, more than 20% of the total, which is 300. That's all it is. We're done. Instead of writing 36 plus P, it makes more sense. Tradition dictates, tradition dictates that we write the unknown first. P plus 36 is greater than, no, not equal to. We're not told it's greater than or equal to. We're told that it's more than. That's wrong. Not that it makes any difference. Because there's only one answer choice that's going to make sense. P plus 36, 20% of th that can be written as 0.2 times 300. And our job is simply to pick an answer choice that matches that. And that is going to be answer choice D. Let's do the next one, shall we? Number, th number 26. Number 26, we are told that the surface area, surface area of a cube equals 6 times a over 4 squared. Parameter of one face. That's what we have to figure out. What's going to be the parameter of one of the faces of this cube if its surface area happens to be six times a over four whole squared? Well, let's draw a cube. Here's our cube, and as we know, in cube all sides are equal. Let's call this side S. It is S inches long. And all of the sides are S. How do we find the surface area of a cube? What does surface, surface area actually mean? What does the term surface area mean? Well, it means exactly what it says. It means area on the surface. And how many faces are there? There are six faces. This is one face right here in the front. But similarly, there's one face in the back. There's one face on the top, there's one face at the bottom, there's one face on the left, there's one face on the right. And they all have the same area. The area of, area of each of the faces is S squared. It's just S times S. And there are six of them. That's the surface area. That's the surface area of the cube. And we are told that that, equals, that amount equals to this right here. Six times A over 4 squared. A over 4 squared. As we can see, six drops out. S squared equals A over 4, S squared equals A over 4, which implies that each side must equal to A over 4. We're not quite done yet. I hope A over 4 is not one of the answer choices, because somebody in their haste, it is one of the answer choices. They are mean. These people are mean. Nasty people. We're not done yet. That's not the end of the story. This is just the one side. The question is, what's the perimeter of one face? Perimeter of one face it has four sides, obviously. One, two, three, four. And each of the sides is S. So the perimeter, perimeter of one of the faces is four times S. But we know S is equal to A over four. Four times S, which is A over four. And the four drops out. And turns out that the perimeter of one of the faces is simply A. Whatever unit that you happen to be or happen to be using. A inches, A yards, A, A feet, it doesn't matter. And that's what it was. The answer is A. Oh, there is one more problem, sorry, on the page. I thought we were done. There is one more. Number 27. Let's 
it's a good thing that I happened to notice because I was about to close, close the shop. <coughs> Number 27. Number 27 we are told that the mean of 8 scores is equal to 14 and a half. We are told that when when the highest when the highest score is removed the mean of the remaining seven score is 12. The question simply is what is the highest score? Let me get rid of this marker, I don't like the way it writes. If I don't throw it away, I'm going to keep picking it up. Let's find out, shall we? Let's do it here. So first, let's figure out what's the sum of the what's the sum of the eight of these squares, eight of these scores rather. What's the sum of these eight of these eight, eight of these score, scores if their mean is fourteen and a half? If the mean is fourteen and a half, their sum. Let's call it S one for the first one. It's going to be very simple. It's simply mean, which is fourteen and a half times the number of score number of scores which is eight that's the, that's the total of the total of all the scores all eight scores let's find out what, what that is shall we 10 times 8 is 80 4 times 8 is 32 and half of 8 is 4 I get six I get 116 let's find out the second one let's do the second one here after we after we remove after we remove one score after we remove one score now we only have seven scores and their mean of the remaining seven score is twelve seven times twelve let's find out what, what that is shall we what is seven times twelve oh, don't look at me what how the hell do I know let's find out shall we seven times ten is seventy and seven twos are fourteen looks like it's 84. We subtract that from it and whatever is left over must have been the highest score because that's the one that we removed. 6 minus 4 is 2 and 11 minus, oh there you go, it's 32. The highest score is 32. And that is answer choice C. And that's all it was. I'll see you tomorrow. We'll pick up from where we left off on the next page. We'll begin our, continue our story. So as you turn the page, the next page, 28, 29, and 30, they are the most difficult problem in this section. They are the most difficult problem in this section because there are 30 multiple choice questions and therefore the scalar difficulty for the multiple choice question is 1 through 30. On a scale of 1 through 30, these are the last three. And then as we start doing the gradient problems, you'll find that the first three or four are going to be very simple. And then again, on page number, page number 1014 and 1015, the last four gradient is going to be a difficult one. In other words, the scale is not, it's not one continuous scale 1 through 38 because there are two different types of problems, therefore there are two scales. One scale, one scale of difficulty goes 1 through 30 and the other one goes 1 through 8 or to be more precise 31 through 38. So tomorrow when we meet we'll do the last three. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? If you wish to get hold of me, if you would like to work with me, if you would like me to help you get ready for the exam, I can help you with the math portion, I can help you with the grammar portion, which is the writing portion, and I can also help you with the vocabulary parts. Vocabulary parts also something that you can do on your own, right here. But if you wish to get hold of me, you can send me an email, and I'll be more than happy to do what I can. Okay? Bye now.